Orleans Saints mini camp has just wrapped up day two for the black and gold. So welcome into Saints Now by Chat Sports. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the news and notes around the black and gold and everything that you as a fan should be aware of from practice. But I'll encourage you to get more news around the black and gold. Follow me on Instagram or on Twitter, formerly known as X. Follow me on Instagram and be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's a reason that this number is as high as it was. Not too long ago, the numbers were not that high. I remember taking over this Saints channel when we had less than 2,500 subscribers. But your boy's been putting in the work. Your boy has been grinding and been getting you guys Saints videos almost every single day. And recently, we've been giving you multiple videos a day, multiple live shows a week. So if you want more coverage on social media and on YouTube, this is your place to be. Hit me up on social media and be sure to subscribe. The links to my accounts are in the comments and description of this video. And be sure to hit that big red sub button. So let's start off with some attendance here. These are the players that the media did not see at Saints minicamp day two. Juwan Johnson missed another session of practice. Alante Taylor, Fayan Hicks, and Jack Heflin as well. And I do want to add a quick note around Juwan Johnson. A lot of people on social media are freaking out and getting mad and being like, Cut Juwan Johnson. Get him off my team. I hate him. He's not that good anyway. I'm going to tell you guys to chill the hell out. Um, his wife recently, you know, got sick. Pretty sure she's pregnant as well. So, like, hot take. I'm sorry. Chill the hell out. Chill the F out and give him a – like, family is more important than football. That's a fact. I'm just going to give him the pass. I'm going to give him a, a, a free get-out-of-jail card – or get-out-of-jail-free card here, and it's fine. I'm okay with Juwan Johnson missing two days in minicamp. Training camp is where he really needs to be present. And on top of that, it's not like he isn't doing stuff off the field. There's no reports of him doing stuff. He hasn't posted videos of him doing stuff. But there's also no reports saying, like, he has just exclusively not been doing anything. He's holding out. He hates the team. That's not what's going on here. So I want everyone to relax around Juwan Johnson. We do have some stuff to talk about tight ends here in a little bit, but I want to discuss Alante Taylor real quick. There is a minor injury for number one. He's dealing with an oblique injury, and Dennis Allen said it's nothing to be worried about. He is not even concerned in the slightest, and he expects him to be back for training camp, but does not expect Uno to be back tomorrow at day three of minicamp for the last day of mandatory minicamp. So there's some injury news around Alante Taylor. Again, it's nothing major, but again, we want to inform you, and we're here to make you smarter fans. That way you can understand what's going around your favorite team. Now, Brian Brzee, the rookie draft, or the first round draft pick from last year, he returned to practice after missing yesterday's session. So it's good to see number 90 back on the field working with the team and getting those reps. I'm not exactly sure why Brzee missed yesterday. Dennis Allen said anyone who wasn't there, he knew what was going on. He knew why he wasn't there. It was an excused absence. So I assume it's something like he was sick or something pretty basic. I don't want to put words in their mouths, but I do think that it wasn't anything you know, to be worried about for him missing. The fact that he's back is important, and it's good news. And I will also add, in terms of other players missing, you had, like, Ryan Ramchek. You had some of these guys who, Chase Young, who had been injured. We knew we're not going to be participants here. But they were at the facilities. They were present, minus Ryan Ramchek. They were around and doing stuff. Ramchek is rehabbing at home. So here's the quarterback play. Here's what's been going on around the most important position in football and arguably in sports. Derek Carr, he's looked really, really good this entire summer throughout the OTA session, throughout minicamp. He's looked really, really good in this offense. Again, I said it in a video yesterday. That's what you should expect from a veteran of this caliber in Derek Carr. But he's finally looking like the quarterback that the Saints brought him in and expected to be. So that's some really good news. This system is clearly catered towards Derek Carr, and he clearly seems a lot more comfortable than what he was working with with Pete Carmichael. They've been doing a lot of passes over the middle, been getting a lot of stuff in between the hash marks, which is really exciting for the Saints offense. He's also been working and been po there's been a lot of clips of some deep shots to Rashid Shaheed, which is my favorite play. Hey, Sheed, freaking run. It's my favorite play in the Saints playbook. I, I mean, just run that four or five times a game. A couple times those will be open. And then he also notably did throw a ball to Alvin Kamara today. Got a connection with the two-point uh, conversion to Rashid Shaheed in the two-minute drill, like end-of-game uh, drills and end-of-game sessions. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, I also like that the offense is involving Alvin Kamara in the passing game because we all know how lethal he can be there. Let's talk about Spencer Rattler. He worked with the number twos today, and it's worth noting that 
everything that we've reported has been that Spencer Rattler has been working with the threes, but it's actually come out recently through media and at OT or at minicamp that Rattler and Hayner have been going back and forth, but today was the first time that media saw Spencer Rattler work with the twos. He was five for five and seven on seven drills, which is really, really good. He did throw an interception to Marshawn Lattimore, so shout out to number 23 for still balling out. But Rattler, after throwing that interception in an interview with NOF, he said, hey man, if there was anybody to throw the, an interception to, I'm glad it was locked down Lattimore. Now Jake Hayner at minicamp, he was working with the threes today, but most, most throughout the offseason, he's been with the twos. Nathan Peterman, worth noting, yesterday did take some reps away from Jake Hayner. I personally believe that the Saints like Hayner as their QB2 right now, but the training camp battle or but the battle is not done yet. He has looked sharp pretty much the entire summer, which is really, really good to see. I think that Hayner does have some skills. It's just a matter of catering his skills to an offense, or catering the offense to his skill set, excuse me. And he did throw an interception, and it was his first interception throughout the summer to Millard Bradford, a UDFA that the Saints signed from TCU. Now, Dennis Allen does expect this quarterback two battle to go through training camp, so we're not going to have an answer anytime soon as to who will be the QB2 for the black and gold. Like I mentioned a minute ago, I believe it will be Spencer, or it'll be Jake Hayner right in this moment, but once we get to training camp, we'll see how Spencer Rattler continues to develop. What Rattler has going for him is that this is the regime that drafted him. The past offensive regime drafted Hayner, so maybe there's a little bit of a connection more towards Rattler over Hayner. That's kind of the argument between the two right now. But like I said, we will not know what's going on until training camp is underway. And honestly, training camp is done. But I want you to head back to school for me, Saints fans. It's the middle of June, but some of us, you know, are on summer vacation. So get back in the classroom. Grade the Saints QB room for me, A, B, C, D, or F. I want you to, you to share your thoughts on the Derek Carr, Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler QB room that the New Orleans Saints are rolling with right now. So we did have a mini camp tryout. It's actually a pretty interesting player in Sal Canella, who did spend some time at Auburn. Not a ton of production, but he did have a handful of touchdowns. He did also go undrafted in 2020. Now he's 27 years old, and he has spent the last two springs with the Arlington Renegades last this past spring with, in the UFL, the year before that it was with the XFL. And you guys might actually remember the name or it might be a little, a little bit familiar. If you tuned into the USFL, he was a New Orleans Breakers legend. So that was pretty cool that uh, a guy who played in New Orleans a couple seasons ago is actually going to be back uh, playing for the big boys. So more on Sal Canella. He, was dra or he had some stints with the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks, was brought in during mini camp or training camp, did not crack the final roster. And in an XFL draft in 2023, the Arlington Renegades did draft him. Now, in 2023, not a ton of production, or not insane production, but 42 receptions, 415 yards, and zero touchdowns. But in 2024, he had 53 receptions, 497 yards, and he led the entire UFL in touchdown receptions with six. So that's some pretty good news if you ask me. And I also will add in 2024, he led all metrics for a tight end. So it's the best tight end in the spring football leagues in the UFL. So maybe this is a guy who could actually crack the roster. And I know I was talking about Juwan Johnson earlier and he has a reason that he's missing, but if he continues to miss and he isn't back anytime soon, maybe this is a, maybe this is a player who could find himself on the roster. I also think Dallin Holker is a guy who is the shoe-in to make the roster, if anybody. But I think that Taysom Hill, you don't view him as a tight end. I think you just view him as an offensive weapon. Uh, Tommy Hudson, Michael Jacobson, they've been doing some good stuff at OTAs and at minicamp. But yesterday at minicamp, they actually had to leave early. So maybe there is a role for Sal Canella, who is a little bit more similar to the Jimmy Graham type of tight end, rather than just... He's like the big bodied, super tall, pretty much just a pass catcher. That's the kind of tight end that uh, Sal Cannell is. And I will add this like, I, I wanted to go through and like see the measurables. If Cannella is signed, he's the tallest tight end on the Saints roster. Uh, at six foot five, 242 pounds, that's a large human being. He would be the biggest tight end on the depth chart. Maybe, arguably, Foster Morrow has a little bit extra weight because of some muscle. He's at 250 pounds, according to ESPN. But I do think that there is a path for Sal Canella to at least challenge some of those players 
for a low-end spot on the roster, maybe even a practice squad spot. And I do love the competition. I really like bringing in another receiver exclusive or an exclusively receiving tight end. I think that that's a smart move for the Saints because they have to challenge Dallin Holker. Personally, I'm rolling with Dallin Holker. I mean, the fact that he went undrafted was really, really shocking to not just me, but a ton of people out there. I think that he is the better player. There's, in my opinion, there's a reason Canella has really only stuck around in those spring leagues, but we'll see. I'm not here to tell you guys. I don't want him to make the roster. I'm not here to tell you. I don't think he'll make the roster. I'm just here to tell you he's trying out. Maybe he has a shot. There is sort of a path considering Dallin Holker was the only addition to the tight end room this offseason. So what say you Saints fans? Will Sal Canella make the roster in New Orleans? Just give me a simple yes or a simple no in the comment section. That's to round things out, I want to do a quick update on the kicker competition because it is important to know special teams, special players, special plays. Shout out to Sketch. Dennis Allen on the kicker competition said that I think Charlie Smith has probably, or probably got maybe a little bit of a stronger leg than Groupie, and yet the consistency hasn't been quite the same. My hope is that I'm going to see a nice jump between last year and this year from Blake Groupie because I think he's an extremely talented player. We will let it play out. Now, obviously, this is the competition that's going to take a little bit of time to figure out, considering the fact that Charlie Smith does have a boot. And Nick Underhill reporting that after practice, Smith was good from 66 yards. That is really, really good information. And that's a really good thing for Charlie Smith if he wants to crack an NFL roster. I do believe that Blake Groupie will end up winning this kicker battle, but maybe the Saints will keep Charlie Smith around. With the International Pathway program, NFL teams have an extra spot on the practice squad, so he could be that 17th player on the practice squad. And hell, maybe it's like a little bit of a thing where it's Groupie goes in on some field goals, Smith goes in on some field goals. With the new kickoff rule, maybe group one of them does one versus the other. Who knows? If they like Charlie Smith, I do think that this current regime will find a way to get him involved on the team, and I do think that it is uh, going to be a hard battle for him to win, but I don't want to write him off just yet. So final thoughts for me, Saints fans. I think it's pretty cool. There were some reports out there. A lot of the rookies did stick around on the field after practice was done, and they kept working. They kept getting reps. They kept learning. And I think that that's really, really cool. And I think it's really important as a rookie to learn these things and to develop yourself and set yourself up for the most success possible. You have to be a sponge in these kind of situations. And I think that this is really, really good in terms of developing a culture and developing a team, not just a couple guys who want to go and win, but an entire unit that works together as one. I freaking love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Do not forget to subscribe. Y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.